Bonjour, bienvenue sur le stand de... Welcome to SGO stand, where we're looking at the improved version of Mystica and its main stereoscopic applications. Mystica offers more than just 3D. It can also be used for colorimetry and can support every type of codec, reading them in real time without needing to carry out a render by simply working with metadata, applying it to the clip environment and bringing them together in the final composition. So Mystica's first special feature is its time space, or its spatial area. It's organized both horizontally in time and like a Photoshop structure, with left and right images, and then superimposes the new image with the new settings, which can be adjusted in real time without needing to do a render. Remember that Mystica can use any kind of codec. Ari Raw, Alexa, Red, ProRes, DNX HD, etc., without needing to do a render. The system works with an HP Z800 workstation with Atomics DVS boards, which allows real time file reading. One of the first things we're going to look at in the 3D application is to take the two images, one from each eye, and deal with the discrepancies in colors between the two cameras. So first we open the match color function using the checkerboard mode and we can balance the two cameras straight away. Checkerboard, on va donc effectuer immédiatement une, un équilibrage des deux caméras. Cet This first color balance is relatively basic. Uh, Then, to fine tune it, we can use Mystica's very powerful motion estimation tool. We create two central images, superimposing left and right eyes in the middle. Apply a first color correction that adjusts both density and color. Then we can fix polarization issues, which in this case is a problem owing to the curvature of the mirrors or because of the way the light is hitting the mirrors. So, in two clicks, Mystica can resolve problems of polarization caused by mirrors. With one click, the image can be adjusted, making the reference image either the left or the right eye, and then another click adjusts polarization. Now we're going to look at problems of geometric alignment, such as rotation, tilt, keystone and zoom. We do this by clicking the match geometry button. Again, with one click, we can automatically resolve all alignment problems, even when dealing with misalignment of the cameras. So, this can all be done fairly automatically, but when we have to deal with more complex cases, usually around 10% of cases, Mystica allows us to adjust the parameters manually. Thirdly, we select the convergence planes. With one click, we can automatically force, for example, discrepancies between the rotation of the two cameras. Just like that. The geometry is adjusted. Now, with convergence planes, we can choose, for example, a point on the back of one of the zebras, here or here. And with one click, we can define the convergence point of the two cameras. It's a relatively simple concept, shifting the two images. And now, we can animate, within one shot sequence, the convergence of the stereoscopic image, which is done by inserting a keyframe. So, at the start of the clip, we choose the convergence plane on the zebra on the left, then on the zebra in the middle, and then on the tail of the zebra on the right. So, so, three or four keyframes are defined, 
And we've done an animation within that shot, and of course in real time. And when we go back and play from the start of the clip, whatever the codec is, the image is not affected. There's no need to render, and we can see the evolution of the convergence plane. So we see that this set of parameters, mainly those of the convergence plane, are relatively easy to adjust, since it's just a case of modifying the shift between the two images. So now we can move on to the next step, which is working with the disparity of the two images. Mystica is the only system that allows us to modify the interocular distance between the two cameras so easily. It's done with motion estimation, which allows us to extract a disparity map, for example. This shows the depth profile in black and white. So, this is a graphic representation of the separation between the two images. So the whiter the image, the further away the object is in the distance and the darker it is, the closer it is to the spectator. So adjusting the density of the image, we can see the possibility of artificially adjusting the interocular disparity between the two cameras in post-production. Now we can see, on the right, a histogram of the stereoscopic space, with closer images on the left and more distant objects on the right. The green line indicates the convergence plane. So, by adjusting the parameters in this tool, we can change the density of the disparity map, and so change the amplitude of the histogram, which is the profile of the image. So again, with the two displaced images, we can set the convergence plane in post-production, in this case on the back of the elephant, which we can see doesn't move, but the scene around it does move, with the nearer objects getting nearer and the distant objects getting further away, all the time rotating around the rotation point set on the elephant's back. Now let's look at just one image to show how Mystica can recalculate perspective. So here is one image, and with the pixel-by-pixel -pixel analysis, we can artificially recreate a different perspective. It's not possible to do this in all cases, as it depends on the quality of the disparity map. So, if we know a bit about the system, we can decide at the start, if we think that it will be necessary, because of the light in the scene or difficult cues, we can more or less easily obtain a disparity map. So we can see by using this function, the perspective of the elephant changes. Up to now, we have only been adjusting the whole stereoscopic space. Now let's go further. We're going to conserve a part of the image, such as the foreground, for example, which we like because it's correct. That's to say the convergence plane is correctly located. But we can see that, as often happens, when we bring the convergence plane towards the spectator, towards negative parallax, the background becomes misaligned because we've gone beyond the standard 6.5 centimeter interocular distance. So we're going to preserve the foreground up to the convergence plane. And we just want to modify the background by adjusting the space between the two cameras. So in the histogram on the right, which shows the depth of the scene in profile, we can see the green line, which represents the convergence plane, and we can position it, setting limits for the separation. So we can see, in this example, we keep the convergence plane in its place in the foreground and everything in front of the convergence plane. So depending on the area we have chosen to preserve, we can modify either the foreground to the convergence plane or the convergence plane to the background. Mystica is the only system that allows us to do this.
on va choisir de modifier les arrière-plans, les lointains, entre le plan de convergence et les lointains. Donc, à ma connaissance, pour l'instant, il n'y a aucun système qui, qui fasse ça. C'est le seul moment... This is the only time we have to do a render. All the other operations are, of course, done in real time. Obviously, we're talking about calculations for perspective that use highly advanced algorithms, so we need to create media and do a render at this point. To recap, in the histogram on the right, we can see the three lines that represent negative parallax, the blue line, the convergence plane, the green line, and positive parallax, the red line. So, between the blue and green lines, or between the green and red lines, we can preserve an area. So the convergence plane is fixed in the foreground, and we can, if we want, reduce the interocular space in the background to conform to 6.5 centimeters.